Hello and welcome to Bookworms. My name is Bex and I love books and this week we've got to app absolutely brilliant brand new ones to tell you all about. There's Kate Pankhurst and Molly Forbes. Now we'll come to Molly a little bit later but first let's chat about Kate Pankhurst. You might know her from the fantastically great women series and there is a brand new book in the adventure called Sports Stars and Their Stories. It talks about some of the amazing stories of some of history's most talented female sports stars from football superstars to trailblazing Olympians. So let's find out more. So I am joined right now by Kate Pankhurst, the author of the fantastically great women series and has a new book out, Sports Stars and Their Stories. Hey, Kate, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Very good. Now, I mean, this series is fantastically successful. Uh, You must be dead chuffed at how it's gone. Oh, absolutely. I think when I first started working on the books, which I was thinking about this the other day, it was quite a long time ago now. It was eight years ago when the first book came out. I thought I'd maybe be doing one or two books in the series about women from history. And then it's just grown and it's been, you know, a fantastic journey seeing children learning all about these incredible women from history and then a brilliant journey for me because I've got to learn about them all too and get to know them as I've been making the books. Yeah do you do like loads and loads of research because I've got to say like you know in this book in particular there are some people I've never heard of I mean it's quite impressive you must have had to really dig deep. Yes definitely I do I try and chat to like people who work in different fields like science or engineering or like different jobs to the ones I do and I find that they might have heard of an an amazing woman in that field that I can put into the book and then yeah for the sports stars book that was such an interesting bit of research to look into the past and learn about some of these female sports stars but the women in this book a lot of them are quite recent history so there's some sports stars in the book like Ellie Simmons the Paralympic swimmer who is a really recent athlete that children will know about and Marta Vieira da Silva who is known as the world's greatest female footballer yes it's been great to sort of look at some women who have been pioneering and inspiring other women and girls to get involved with sport and also to learn a little bit about the challenges that some of these women still faced being women in sport. I mean, it is fascinating. It, you, I mean, you take us right back to the very, very beginning, don't you? Uh, you go back quite far away, but then you, you do whistle-stop tour of, of women in sports in history. And it is fascinating to see some struggles that have been there the whole time, some that have changed. By the way, I really loved, was it Lottie Dodd, the Victorian sports lady? Oh, she's incredible, isn't she? She was, oh man. She's one of those ones, you're like, oh, why have I not heard about her before? She's really interesting. So for listeners who don't know, she was known as the Little Wonder because she was so good at so many different types of sport so from tennis to archery to to tobogganing and ice skating I think golf as well she turned her hand to yeah so basically kind of most sports she turned her hand to she was really very good at them and that was in the Victorian era when we imagine sort of ladies to be sat still not showing their ankles she was out there smashing it as a sportswoman and of course this book is perfect for this year because it is an Olympic year it's a sports year in general do you think there is a difference in attitude between women's sports now the lionesses have come along and like it's a bit more exciting. I think it's absolutely amazing for sort of children today listening to this, that they are getting to see women absolutely at the top of their game, you know, smashing it and winning and being powerful and strong. Yeah. And I think it's kind of, the thing about women's sport is I think we're still sort of pushing to be on a level playing field in lots of areas with the men's side of the sport but I think things have kind of progressed massively in the last few years and I think it's a conversation people are having about kind of women athletes you know being paid the same as men and getting the same training opportunities as men doing the same sport yeah and I think the lionesses are just inspirational all round aren't they and in the book was there somebody in particular for you that was inspirational because I mean you have so many amazing women in here was there one person's story that you were like I can't believe that such good stuff came out of a tricky time. Yeah, I think it's kind of with all the stories, you kind of read them and go, wow, that's incredible that people thought like that. So the first woman to climb Mount Everest, Junko Tabay, people thought she joined a mountaineering club just so she could meet a husband. And it wasn't, it was because she loved climbing and she had to like raise all the money to get to Everest and do the expedition with a group of women to be the first woman to climb, climb Mount Everest. But one of the most like interesting stories that I found in the book, the female 
female footballer that I mentioned, Marta Vieira da Silva, who is a Brazilian footballer. When she started playing football in the 1980s as a child, up until a few years be- before that, so in the 1970s in Brazil, so that's like, might seem like a long time ago, but it's fairly recent history, women's football wasn't just banned, it was illegal. <laughs> I read that and was like, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it is crazy. And then in this country as well, the FA banned professional women's football until the 1970s. And when I read that, I just thought, my goodness me, we have come a long way since then, haven't we? We're, st- we're still trying to kind of completely get there, but we've definitely come a long way since then. So I thought kind of facts like that really astound me that that has happened so recently in history that women have faced challenges such as football being illegal for women. Just the idea of like wanting to play football and not being able to seems a bizarre thing especially now but and like you say the 1970s weren't that long ago in the grand scheme of things so this book does seem incredibly relevant and still like you say there's still so much more to go and to do do you think yeah I think I saw a stat on the Paris Olympic Games that this is the first Olympics where we've achieved like equal representation from female and male athletes across the board at the Olympics so that's like really something to celebrate I think but I think it's always good to like look around us and question the world and just kind kind of, you know, stand up and take our place in the world, especially for women and girls to kind of be informed about what's happened in the past and continue to look at the world around us and make it better. Well, Kate, thank you so much for telling us all about these books. They they are, this book is incredible. Women in Sport, I think, is something that is so uh, so exciting to see uh, represented. So thank you so much for telling us all about it. Oh, no worries. Thank you for having me. I loved reading that book and it is so incredibly illustrated. Definitely check it out. And now next up, we've got Molly Forbes and her book, Everybody. This is a really cool illustrated guide teaching you that everybody is different and we should celebrate our glorious differences together. I am here right now with all author Molly Forbes, author of a brand new book called Everybody. Uh, Molly, how are you doing? I'm really good, thank you. I'm enjoying the summer. I'm very pleased that it's it's summer. And yeah, I'm really good. Excited to be here. Yeah, summer has finally arrived. I mean, very vaguely where I am, but it's I can see the sun, so that's fine, right? We're not at school, so that's the main thing. We're not it having to be in school, so it still feels like a break. I can go outside and enjoy it. Now, um, when I said your book was called Everybody... I mean, it is literally for and about every body out there, right? Yeah, exactly. It's for whatever your body looks like, however your body functions, it's for you. In the intro to the book, I even say you can even lend it to your pet hamster if your pet hamster can read. Like it's for literally everyone. And it's all about celebrating, respecting and accepting all bodies, but especially your own, but everyone's bodies as well. It's uh, such a big topic. I'm going to be honest with you Molly I'm not entirely sure where to dive in with this one because you've covered so much stuff in here and I think it's a really important book for people to read especially sometimes people do feel a little bit rubbish about what they look like or how they feel in their body but I think you know you interview some incredible people in there and you talk about how like it's there's the thing of body positivity body neutrality what did you discover going on this journey? I discovered that actually the way that we think and feel about our bodies changes all the time and that it's super complicated and no two people will feel the same but also when you grow up and your body's changing so I'm a mum so when I went through pregnancy that was also a period of change and now I'm a little bit older I'm 40 and my body's changing again and the one thing about all bodies that we all have in common is that our bodies are never the same our bodies are always changing even when you're a grown-up your body is changing and actually the way that we think and feel about our bodies can change as well but the one thing that we can all do is just try and kind of be friends with our bodies and accept that actually those feelings any kind of feelings of confusion or like not feeling like amazing about how we look all the time it's okay to feel that way Lots of people feel that way, but it doesn't mean that we have to accept it as our new normal. So there are things that we can do to feel better. And I loved writing this book because it's actually a really, it might sound like a really serious topic. And and at times it is a serious topic, but it's also a really fun, joyful, positive topic because we all have bodies and they all look and function different ways. And actually bodies are really cool. They do amazing things. Um, So I loved kind of discovering about how our bodies work as well. So you talk about how for a long, long time, people think that um, to look good is you look a certain way. 
you look a certain like weight or you have a certain look about you and you interview people who say that that's not the case and you say that's not the case as well like you can look you know everybody looks different and that's fine but I think for a long time there's an, a, a feeling that like you have to conform to a certain standard that society wants would you say? The key to feeling good about our bodies is appreciating how our bodies allow us to live the lives that we live and appreciating and, and celebrating how our bodies are different and how we all look different because even if we all ate exactly the same food and we moved our bodies in exactly the same way we would all have different shaped bodies and actually that's really cool it's something to celebrate so one of the kind of key messages of the book is that actually those differences are things to celebrate and respect rather than all trying to conform to looking the same way because no matter what you do we will never all look the same because we're all built to be different that is literally nature it's you know it's how we're designed and that's actually really cool yeah you um you do talk about the history of this kind of thing and you mentioned you know kind of like early man and people assuming everybody looked the same but they didn't even look the same then and then you talk about you know Henry VIII and how the perception was he was a big guy and that meant he was healthy and, and wealthy because he could afford a lot of food basically and it is funny through the ages that like perception of bodies has changed there's always a new trend and people think that trends are only something that has kind of existed since social media because you know we have like social media trends and TikTok trends and all of that kind of thing but actually trends have existed right back through the ages so I do like fun true and false activities with kids when I'm doing workshops in schools and we talk about some of the like historical beauty trends so you know back in in ancient Greece it was the trend to have like a unibrow if you're a woman and they used to use goat hair and resin to kind of create a unibrow because that was the really like in thing and then you know in in the time of Henry VIII it was seen as like a real status symbol to have a bigger body because it again it proved how wealthy and powerful you were and it wasn't until later on that actually the body ideal the 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 quote unquote ideal body shape started to be kind of much more lean and that then became a sign of how moral or religious someone was and it's really interesting these kind of ways that our society has always viewed bodies but that body ideal has always changed and that's really important because that's still changing now so there's always going to be an in person there's always going to be a top celeb to look up to or a top influencer to look up to and that person that will always change and so the whatever the body trend of the day is whether it's you know on fleek brows or whatever the thing is it's always going to change so there's no point even trying to keep up with it because actually you're fighting a losing battle the best thing to do is to kind of celebrate what our bodies can do and how our bodies are just as they are because actually our bodies are flipping awesome just as they are. And we don't need to try and conform to those trends because they're always going to change anyway. Honestly, uh, Molly, I feel like there's so much about this book I really want to delve into, but I know uh, um, we don't have all the, the time to do that. But I will say you mentioned, you know, TikTok trends and trends and social media. And you mentioned this in the book as well. You know, you've got wellness experts and that kind of thing. But also not all wellness experts are legit, should we say, or, you know, the trends they're telling us to follow on aren't kind of like actually that healthy. How do, how do we tell if somebody is giving us good advice or not? So in the book, I talk about good body rules and bad body rules. And that's not about having a good or bad body. It's about di- being able to dif- differentiate between rules for bodies that actually can cause harm. And so any type of message, whether it's online or in a book, or even like sometimes at school, any message that is telling you that some bodies are good bodies, and some bodies are bad bodies. So like the opposite of all bodies being good bodies, that is a massive red flag. And it's something to be careful of. Because ultimately, remember, even if we all ate the same food and moved our bodies in the same way, we would all have different shaped bodies. And so there are ways that we can be kind to our bodies and look after our bodies without falling for this like, really like often quite silly wellness advice is telling us that if we just eat that food or do that exercise, we'll look like the person in the video. But actually, our bodies are all made to be different. So, you know, it's about respecting our bodies and looking after our bodies and caring for them with kindness, without thinking that if we do that thing, it will necessarily change the way that we look. Because actually, body positivity isn't about changing the way you look. It's about caring for your body and respecting your body, regardless of what it 
looks like. It's so true. And you also talk about, um, you talk about so many things in this book, you talk about mental health as well. And mental health is is an equally important thing when we're talking about our body. That is part of it, right? Yeah. So our mental health and our physical health can't be separated because the way, you know, our mental health impacts our physical health and our physical health impacts our mental health. Actually, really, when we're thinking about health, we should just think about it as our overall you know, it's our health, whether that's physical health or mental health, it's all important. And so sometimes what can happen is people, you know, do things because they think it's looking after their physical health, but it can actually make them quite worried, it can impact their mental health, it can make them confused and anxious, particularly when it comes to things like eating and moving their body in a particular way. So actually, we need to remember that our mental health is just as important as our physical health. So when you're thinking about, you know, being healthy or doing things that are like looking after your body, really, Really, what we need to be thinking about is what makes my body feel good? What makes me feel good? What do I enjoy? What is fun? What gives me a mood boost? You know, and doing the things that make your body feel good are good for both your physical health and your mental health. Yeah, it's funny. Me and my friends had this conversation last night where we were saying sometimes you kind of need to take a second and just listen to your body and see what you actually want. And she'd had a really difficult day and she said to herself, I just sat there and I thought, you know what I really want right now is some Thai food. (laughs) And I was like, okay. And she said, it was all I wanted. She was like, I couldn't figure out. I felt really confused and it just, just kind of slowed everything down. And I was like, literally in this moment, what do I want? And she was like, and that just helped me like start to clear through everything else. Just like listen one by one to what your body is saying and what it wants. And I was like, it's a really interesting thing of just like kind of chilling out and just listening to yourself I think yeah and there's a really cool word for that and in the book we talk about that it's called introception yeah it's a really cool word and it's that idea of being able to tune into your body and introception is different for different people because our brains all work differently as well so whether you've got you know a neurotypical brain or a neurodivergent brain that can also impact how we tune into our body but actually being able to try and listen to what our body needs and 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 appreciate kind of what feels good what feels what feels nice in this moment is a really core part of positive body image because actually when we listen to our body our bodies are often trying to tell us what they need but the noise around you know what we should and shouldn't be doing and how we should and shouldn't look can sometimes drown out some of the messages that our bodies are trying to give to us it's incredible I loved your book so much and I really could talk about it all day, but um, I'll, I'll let you go at some point. But is there one thing that you learned or one message you want to pass on from the book? If we, if there was nothing else that we took from the book, what one thing would you like to make sure everybody took away from it? I think everyone needs to know that all bodies are good bodies. There are no bad bodies. All bodies are good bodies. And that includes your body. That includes everyone in your class, everyone that you know. And I think that when we all realize that all bodies are good bodies, it helps us not only look after our own bodies and appreciate our own bodies, but also be respectful of all lots of different types of bodies that might not look or function like our own too. Excellent ending motto, I think there. Um, Well, Molly, thank you so much. And everybody is out right now and everybody should go and read it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's for everybody. And you know, what I love is when I'm hearing that children are sharing it with the grown-ups in their lives as well, because I think it's something that... Although it's for readers age nine plus, I think it's something that lots of grown-ups can benefit from too. (laughs) Molly, thank you so much for telling us all about it. Thank you. So interesting this week to have two non-fiction books, uh, but I think you'll agree they were pretty awesome. Big thank you to Kate Pankhurst and Molly Forbes for telling us all about their books. And of course, if you've enjoyed this podcast, well, first of all, thank you very much. Secondly, make sure to like, subscribe and follow wherever it is you get your podcast from. Bye. (laughs) 